Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to test an automotive relay, that is a 12 volt relay. To perform this test I'm going to be using a multimeter and a 12 volt battery. Right, I have an example of an automotive relay and on the face you can see there are some numbers and a little diagram. If your automotive relay does not have that, it's fine. I'll still show you how to do the test. In this case, because there's a diagram, I'm going to use that diagram to explain how to do the test. Thereafter, I'll explain how to do the test if the diagram is not there. It says 85, 86, 87, and 30. Between 85 and 86, it's showing a little box. That box signifies a coil. 87 to 30, this is the contact section. This is your secondary circuit. On the bottom of the relay, you can see I've got 85 and 86. So that is the coil. This is number 30 and that's number 87, that is the contactor. If your relay does not have the numbers, it's not a problem. Now I'm going to show you how to test it. Over here I have a bench supply. I've set it to close to 12 volts. If you do not have a bench supply, just use another battery. This is a 12 volt lead acid battery and you do not have to have such a big battery. You can even use just a basic remote battery from a remote control. I now take my multimeter and set it to ohms. I put the one lead on my multimeter on that terminal and the other lead on that terminal. I'm assuming that is the coil terminal because of the numbering. Now in this case if your relay did not have the numbering this is how you'll know that that is the coil. And you see I'm getting an ohm value, a resistance of about 70 ohms. If you did not have any labels on your automotive relay you could also just move your leads around until you see that you get a resistance value. You see there it's open circuit. You see there Open circuit, open circuit, open circuit. But over here I'm getting a resistance value again. So that's showing me that that is the coil. This will also stop you from shorting out a battery if the relay is faulty. I can now connect my battery to that terminal and that terminal to operate the relay to see if it opens and closes. At the same time connect your leads to the opposite legs. These are the contact legs and you can see that it is open circuit telling me that the relay is not operating and the contacts are open. At this point I'm going to put my meter onto continuity. Continuity tells me there's a short circuit. If the resistance is very low the meter will make a noise. For example if I short out the two leads from my multimeter listen to the meter's noise. And also look at that value it says zero telling me short circuit. If I want to show you the resistance you can see it's below one ohm telling me it's a short circuit. So I'm putting my leads on those two terminals. Because I've measured the other terminals, I now know that the coil is between that and that. Firstly, because of the diagram. But secondly, if there was no diagram, it's because I measured that 70 ohms. Now, as I touch on the lead, you should hear the relay operate. And you should also see the meter make a dude sound. And also the resistance will be low. If I now select the resistance, you'll see that the resistance will be very low. Just less than 1 ohm. When I disconnect the battery from my relay, it will open the circuit, resulting in the resistance going very high. There you can see, offline, meaning open circuit. Closed circuit, open. Closed circuit, open circuit. Now here are some tips to check the relay. Listen to the sound of the relay. It should make a distinct click sound. That relay sounds fine. When it's time to disconnect your battery terminals, disconnect it from the battery first. You do not want to run the risk of shorting out your battery terminals and discharging your battery, otherwise you'll get a big arc. If you only have a small battery like this, it should also work. You do not have to worry about the polarity because a relay is a coil and it doesn't require a polarity. I'm not going to test the relay with this small battery. Just make sure the battery you use is powerful enough to operate the relay. In this case this is a 12 volt battery and it is powerful enough to operate the relay. As an example I've now got another relay that does not have a diagram telling you which pin is which. So I'm going to quickly show you how to determine which are the coil pins. Take your multimeter and set it to ohms. Take your two leads and as a process of trial and error try to determine between which two legs you get a ohmerage value showing you that that is a coil. There we go. I'm getting 143 ohms on these two terminals. If I just compare it to any other terminal just to make sure. The other terminals are showing me an open circuit. But hang on, look at that. 
Between these two terminals, I'm getting a very low resistance, so that could not be the coil. That is because this is a normally closed terminal for this relay. As you can see, it says 0.4 ohms. That cannot be the coil resistance, it's far too low. This is a contactor that has closed. So in this case, this relay has a normally closed setup, and that is why I'm getting a low resistance like that. But keeping in mind that to activate the relay, you need to activate it with a coil, and that is the coil ohm ridge of 144 ohms. Do not connect your battery to the terminals that have a very low resistance, such as less than 50 ohms. In this case, it is less than one ohm. And just to show you what I mean, these are the coil terminals. The coil having a longer piece of wire has a higher resistance. The resistance is almost always above 20 ohms. But if you look at the contactor side of the relay, you'll see that sometimes a relay has a normally closed setup as well as a normally open setup. So in this case, this relay, when I measured those terminals, you'll see it was on a normally closed setup. And that is why the resistance was so low. So that means that when I activate the relay, it'll actually open those terminals and then it'll go open circuit. So not every relay will be in a closed position. Some relays have both a normally open and a normally closed pinout on the back of the relay. Some relays have only a normally open connection and some relays have only a normally closed connection. If the relay is supposed to be normally open and you measured it and it was closed without being activated, that relay is faulty. And just to show you, this particular relay is a normally closed relay. So here I have my meter on the contactor terminals. There you can see it's got a very low resistance, telling me that that is a short circuit and it is a normally closed relay. Now I'm going to test the relay with the positive and the negative. I'm not going to activate the relay by connecting the positive terminal to my battery. Can you see that the ohm value went very high, opening the circuit, meaning that the relay is a normally closed relay. Now when I deactivate the relay, you can see that the resistance went very low again. So in this case, this automotive relay works differently to this one. This one was normally open, while this one was normally closed. In order to open this relay, I have to activate it. So that is how I know this relay is working. Firstly, I can hear the sound. Secondly, I can see on my meter that the contactors are working. If, for example, I activated the relay and this did not change, then I would know the relay was faulty. The same is true for this relay. If you activated the relay and the contactor terminals did not change the resistance, it means the relay is faulty. There are lots of different relays with lots of different pinouts. The description I just gave you about how to measure the coil resistance is true for most relays. Thanks for watching and cheers.